Hi Cherries, it's Jessica here from A Cherry on Top and today I am showing you some tips and tricks on what I like to do with my snap flip books. I love making these, I think they're so fun and it's a quicker album. I like to make them for uh, seasons or for a trip and there's just a ton of room for photos and they're a lot of fun to make. So if you can see here that I packed a lot into these. I like to work kind of bulky. I add foam um, and other dimensional elements. So I'm end, I end up with my album looking really full over here, but it still has this tiny little spine. So I'm going to show you how I like to fix that. The first step with this is to flip to the back of your book and open it up. Um, this is also how I added additional pages and how you're also able to move around pages in your flipbook. Next, I am taking some black foam. I have found that I like the look of the black foam better because the spine of this book is also black, um, like the binding edge of it. So I noticed there is just less contrast if you use black and also it sits in the background a little bit better. I'm going to apply foam like this onto every page and how you do it is you snip around the couple holes that are in these pages uh, because you don't want to cover where the pegs from the book will go through at. Here I am checking how thick my page is because sometimes with the pages that are extra thick I like to double this layer of foam. Also because this is the first page and I have a pocket on the cover of this first page as well, I figured it would be good to have this double layer of foam here. Now you do not want to pull the backing off just yet. We will when we're ready to settle it down for good, but I'll be pulling this out again soon. Um, to add in the spine, I'm just putting it in and layering them up as I go, so one, they can all be stuck together, and two, those pegs will keep them so they're all straight. You don't have to do this on every page. It depends how thick your, you make your book. Um, I, like I said, I add a lot of dimensional things. I had foam on almost every page. I also included buttons throughout this whole book, so I knew I needed the foam on every page. But if you only have a couple pages that are thicker than the others, you only need to add it on a couple pages. I've also seen plenty of flipbooks where they don't need to add any foam or anything on the edges because they've worked pretty flat. So it all depends on your style. This is about the middle of my book and as you can see I added the double foam on this page as well. And again it's just to keep things nice and spaced. I like to check every once in a while and make sure my spacing is working well. Um, so I do this just by propping up the book and making sure that my spine is as thick as the tail end of my book. So that was my final page and now I have this thick block. And with this it is time to measure the spine. So my book equaled about one and a quarter inches thick, so that's how wide I'm making my spine. And then I'll make it as tall as this book is as well. These books are eight and a half inches tall. You can double check it on your book before you cut it though. Once you have your piece all cut, you'll also want a piece of cardstock. Um, you can layer up this cardstock or do whatever design-wise you want with it. I just wrapped it with the single color. And you measure this out by, I like to lay, it, lay out my spine first. And then there's this small flap of the inside of the flip book. So I like to have that much width on either side of my spine. This allows room for punching holes in it as well as covering up all of the foam. You can be super precise with this and get out your T-square or measure it out. I am just eyeballing it and sticking it right in the middle. After I have it all secured, I am going to take my scoring tool 
and just run it along the edges so the paper can start to mold around this a little bit nicer and so I can have some nice folds. This next step that I do isn't really necessary. I just did it because this is just what I do when I am binding books. Um, but you, for this, it really, this step doesn't really matter. Usually I will do this when binding books if I am covering or folding over all of the sides, but I'm not doing it this time. So yeah, you can just leave them straight. I just did it just out of habit. But um, fold your paper around and mold it to this and your top and your bottom pieces you're going to glue down. I'm using the score tool to just make it sure it's a nice close fit and everything will look good and all in place. Once those steps are all done, you need to measure out some holes. So I'm just grabbing one of the page protector sheets from this flipbook and marking out where my holes will be. I have another flipbook that you can use for this. I'd recommend that because I know we did just foam all of the pages together. Uh, you could also measure it out. But now I am hole punching them so that they'll be able to fit in the in place nice and easy. Now is when you can take your piece and make sure it fits over all of your pages nicely. And we are not adhering this spine piece down yet because we're going to end up pulling it up um, towards the end. I'm just putting it in here to keep everything all nice and lined up. I took off my foam from the first layer of my book and um, so that it will be attached to the spine piece. The book takes a little bit of wiggling on and then wiggling back off to make sure it fits all nicely, but um, it should stay nice and lined up with the holes. I am using some cherry tape on the spine now and that's just so I don't have to wait for dry time with on this plastic page protector because drawing on plastic usually just takes longer so I'm using some cherry tape and I'm lining up my holes and this part should be all set. Again it takes a little bit of wiggling to get back onto this book but it should work out. Um, I'm adding some glue so this is like the final time I'm putting it down. So you want to make sure it's all lined up and I used wet glue in case I need to wiggle it around at all as I get it in. And now it's time to glue on the back page as well. Um, if you don't want to glue it, you really don't even have to. Um, I know I just like to, I feel like it's a more secure book when I do. Uh, also because it is so full, it's putting less pressure on these little metal pegs sticking out and more evenly distributes all of, all of the weight of the book. So there, I've got it all closed and now it's all set. So you can see I got rid of the triangle shape of the book and it's all good to go. So here is what this finished album looks like. Um, you can see I've got this hard spine here and I added some die cut letters here. So it says springtime. I have a front pocket here where I can add an extra photo. I have this little opening book that I can add photos or journaling in, and then a few other little tags and pieces to add journaling. This page has a fun opening, um, so again, I can do a lot of photos um, or journaling on this back side here. Here I've got a page with a large photo area and another little photo flip thing. Um, all of my photo crops, I took a pen and I drew over it a couple times just to frame it a little bit more. So the photos I add in here will just be a little bit smaller so you can still see the black lines and the white paper. I like doing that because one, it makes it easier while I'm adding everything into this and then it's also something that continues throughout the album which I like the look of. Here I've got a, an area, a little pocket here, so I've got a tag in here 
Um, to see, know, so you know that it's a tag that can be pulled out, I added this little one inch um, swoop there. I like to have a lot of layering with my elements. To make this book, all I used was the collection kit, the puffy stickers, and some journaling ephemera, and I was able to create this entire book. I like to have some pages that aren't in the plastic coverings, so a page like this allows you to have a big area and a little bit more interactive. Again, I had put this in a circle so you know that you can flip it open. I really love the snails in this collection. This book was made with the Full Bloom collection from Simple Stories, and their collections just go really well with, like, to turn them into a flip book. Um, they have all of the 3x4 journaling cards that go perfectly. Um, they have a lot of 4x6, which is the size of this as well. Also throughout this book, I added a lot of um, buttons, and that's another reoccurring thing that I included, along with the twine. Usually I like to only use one type of twine throughout the book, but the first twine that I was using ran out about halfway through, so I actually have a couple different kinds. In this pocket, I have one of the bigger ele journaling elements, and then some tags. And these little books are super easy to make because this was actually from a uh, journaling cards. So instead of cutting the three by four inch cards all the way, cutting them all apart, I left a couple of them together that looked nice together to create this little booklet. Here's another page that isn't in a page protector. Um, that's why I also include this large pocket here and then some photos. I have another pocket here that is using the photo as the pocket, so I can stick them behind there. Here is another flip out page. I just like how I can have such a big photo here and then also add whatever I want on this pocket as well. This is, um, yeah, all the spring items. I made this in, like, without any photos in mind yet. And this way I can just add all my spring photos in here and there's already a done album. So it, it should be quick and easy. And then fill out some journaling as well. I really like these flip books for like an entire season or for a trip. So maybe if I do a trip in spring, I would use it for that. But I can fit a ton of photos in here. So that is the end of this flip book. I hope you got some inspiration, and if you haven't made a flip book yet, I really recommend it. I had a lot of fun making this one. So, thanks for watching!